The story opens in an amusement park where we see a little boy named V with his mother. He excitedly rides a carousel while mom watches from a distance. However, after a few rounds, V realizes that she's gone missing. He looks for her everywhere, but all he sees is blurry faces. Due to this, he begins to panic and eventually passes out while people gather around him. In the next scene, we see V with his grandfather in a clinic. The doctor reveals that the boy has prosopagnesia, which is a face blindness disorder. This is caused by emotional distress and he can no longer see people's faces. The news comes as a shock to grandpa and he is left completely speechless. The scene then shifts to 2023, where V has grown up and is now the CEO of a big company, Next Innovation. He insists on starting his day with a cup of hot chocolate, but none of his employees have been able to make it to his liking. V then calls his cousin and deputy CEO, Channon, and asks him to prepare some hot chocolate. However, the latter is fed up with the situation and tells him to find a secretary for himself. Next, we meet Mirren, a young woman who graduated two years ago but still hasn't found a job. She spends most of her time helping her mother and grandmother with the delivery of baked goods. One day, she's finally called up to an important interview, which coincidentally is at Next Innovations. Meanwhile, at his office, V is irritated as the hot chocolate still doesn't meet his expectations, so he decides to start the secretary interviews an hour earlier than planned. Upon learning this, Mirren hurriedly makes her way to the office, but still ends up running late. Although V cannot perceive her face, he doesn't like her dressing style and rejects her immediately. He orders her to leave, but when he learns that her full name is Nirampan, he invites her into his office. Turns out this was his mother's name as well, so hearing it leaves him stunned. In the next scene, V takes her to his office and conducts an interview. He asks her why he should hire her, as they already have a lot of intelligent employees. She responds that she can memorize things quickly, is a hard worker, and is multi-talented. Hearing this, he hands her a stack of files containing information she must learn. He then asks Channon to buy her some dresses, as he thinks her fashion sense is outdated. Following this, Mirren and Channon head to a store where he buys her several outfits and gives her a makeover. Later, he reveals that he knows that she applied to their company multiple times before and is aware that her name is not Marompin. When asked why she changed her name, she nervously explains that it was her mother's idea to bring good luck. He asks her where she got the name because it's uncommon, and she reveals that it was the name of her mother's childhood best friend, whom she never met. After the makeover, Mirren comes home with a few shopping bags. She happily informs her family that she got the job and they don't need to work so hard anymore. This delights the women and they have a short celebration. The next morning, Mirren arrives at work with a new look and Channon is captivated by her. Even though V can't see her face, he compliments her new dress and mentions that she smells good. He then assigns her the first task, which is obviously to prepare a cup of hot chocolate. Our girl immediately heads to the supermarket for the required ingredients. Upon returning, she makes a drink so perfect that it leaves V in awe. He's shocked because it tastes exactly like the one his mother used to make for him. We then see a flashback to his childhood when he was crying after losing his mother. Moments later, Channon approaches him and comforts him with some ice cream. In the present, V is taken aback by the hot chocolate and asks Mirren where she learned to make it. He asserts that he's hired over 50 secretaries, 38 maids, and even traveled to various countries in pursuit of the finest hot chocolate, yet none have met his satisfaction. She replies that she was taught by her mother, who probably learned it in pastry class, but he refuses to believe her. V then asks for the recipe, but she refuses, fearing he will fire her after this. Frustrated, he asks her to make the hot chocolate again, warning that if she fails to replicate the flavor, she will be fired. A little while later, when Mirren returns with the hot chocolate, V informs her that she must accompany him to a party that evening and hands her a folder with new things she must learn. He then takes her to a luxurious clothing store, where he shows her many elegant dresses. Excited by this, she tries on many dresses until she finds the perfect one. V is also impressed by the pretty dress and touches her face to feel her features. That evening as they get ready, V reveals to Mirren that the main objective of this event is to find an investor for their company. He tells her to always stay by his side and inform him who is speaking to him. Hearing this, she's confused because she doesn't know about his condition. She asks if he struggles to remember faces, but he scolds her claiming that it doesn't matter as it's her job as his secretary. Later, they arrive at the party and while V is the center of attention, Mirren walks behind him trying to stay unnoticed. Moments later, they're approached by Tanya, Channon's childhood friend. She appears to be interested in V, but he doesn't feel the same, although she comes from one of the country's wealthiest families. Later, Tanya shares her frustration with Channon's mother, Soifit. The latter appears to be a bit jealous of V, as she believes her son can do much better than him. Later, she talks with her father, who is V and Channon's grandpa, and the company chairman. She complains that her son is working too hard for V and not taking care of himself. 
Hearing this, the grandpa asks Channon if it's true, but he denies it, claiming that his mom is just worried about him. After a while, V and Mirren meet an important guest named Methui. She expresses interest in investing in their company, and Mirren confidently tells her the details of their upcoming app. Impressed, Methui says she will think about investing in their project. She also compliments Mirren's jewelry, claiming she has great fashion sense. However, our heroine states that she dislikes these earrings because they're so large and bright that they look like a billboard. This angers Methui, as the earrings are from her sister's jewelry brand. As a result, she changes her mind about the investment and abruptly leaves. With this, V becomes very angry and starts yelling at Mirren. She tries to explain that she didn't know about the situation, but he begins insulting her, calling her low class. Hurt by his words, she breaks down in tears and walks away. Channon then approaches his cousin and scolds him for being immature. This makes V realize his mistake, and he begins cursing himself. Later, while Mirren is on a bridge, V notices her and assumes she's trying to jump. He rushes to stop her, only to realize that she's cursing his name. Angry, he shouts at her and startles her, almost making her fall from the bridge. But our hero runs to her and manages to catch her in the nick of time. At that moment, Channon arrives and addresses her as Mirren. This confuses V, and he wonders why he's calling her that. In a flashback, we see Narompin shivering and crying after abandoning her son. A little girl offers her candy, and she turns out to be Mirren. Soon, her mother arrives and asks Narompin about her identity and family, but she says she can't remember anything. In the present, she tells V that Mirren is her nickname, while Narompin is her real name. However, he finds it difficult to believe her because her nickname is nowhere near close to her real name. Channon also defends her, saying that if V fires her, he will hire her as his secretary. He then grabs her hand, but V becomes jealous and takes the other hand. Caught in the middle, she gets frustrated and decides to leave alone. However, Channon offers to take her home since it's late. Later, when they arrive at her house, Channon apologizes for what happened. He says that he's older and does most of the work, while V is the boss and believes he's the center of the world. However, Mirren claims that V holds a great deal of respect for Channon and always seeks his approval before making decisions. She tells him not to worry about her, stating that even if she is fired, she will do fine. Channon seems impressed, and as she leaves, he looks at her with affection and blushes. Later upon returning home, he discovers V waiting for him. He apologizes for his immature behavior and questions why Channon is supporting a girl over his own cousin. The latter becomes upset and reminds him that she is the only one who can make hot chocolate to his satisfaction. He claims she's diligent and kind, but V always asserts his superiority by hurting others. Suddenly, Soifit hears the commotion and arrives to investigate. She scolds V for bothering her son and claims he lacks manners because his mother left him. This remark deeply hurts her hero, and Channon also feels bad, so he leads his mother away. The following day, Mirren bakes a cake for V as an apology. However, upon arriving at the office, she learns that he's taken the day off. Later, she encounters Channon, and the two engage in a pleasant conversation. She offers him the cake, and he happily eats it. They then talk about V, and Channon claims that sometimes he vanishes like this and goes missing, but Mirren claims she has a slight idea of where he might be. Later, she arrives at an amusement park and sees V riding the carousel alone. Surprised, he asks how she found out, but she doesn't give him a clear answer. The two then ride together, and Mirren asks about the reason he came here. He explains that this place reminds him of the last time he saw his mother before she vanished. Hearing this, Mirren gets emotional, and she tearfully promises to work harder and not disappoint him from now on. Eventually, V also forgives her and asks her not to tell anyone about his mother. The next day, he goes with Mirren to meet Tanya. As they're talking about business, he receives an urgent call prompting him to step away for a minute. The evil Tanya takes advantage of his absence and starts mocking our hero. She makes fun of her attire and even goes as far as calling her a dog. Mirren defends herself, claiming that she's just doing her job. As they argue, V returns and scolds Tanya for insulting his secretary. He then takes Mirren away and apologizes for what happened. He tells her to be more confident so that no one dare insult her. After cheering her up, V mentions hearing about the cake she made for him and expresses his desire to taste it. She explains that she gave it to Channon, but agrees to make another one. A little while later, the two arrive at her home where she will bake a cake for him. The lights are off since her family is asleep. Moments later in the darkness, they collide, and V collapses on top of Mirren. It looks like they might kiss, but suddenly Mirren's mother and grandmother show up. The women scold V for coming into their home and trying to take advantage of their daughter. However, our heroine calms them down and explains that he's her boss. In a flashback, we see Narumpin bringing a young Mirren and her mom to church. She informs him that she intends to live there and asks them to keep this information a secret. A few months later, the two return to see her and show her the newspaper claiming that her family is searching for her. Mirren's mother urges her to return to them and seek proper treatment. However, Narumpin insists that her dementia will only worsen and she doesn't want her son to see her like that. 
In the present, Mirren's mom becomes worried when she realizes V is Narampan's son. She takes her daughter aside and warns her that she will get into trouble if he discovers the truth. Mirren promises her that he won't find out and that they're only there to bake a cake. At this moment, it's revealed that she was always aware of his identity and applied to his company on purpose to get close to him. She then takes V to the kitchen where they have fun. The next morning, she goes to the church to meet Narampan and gives her the cake. When she mentions that it was made by her son, the woman cries tears of happiness. She asks how it happened, and Mirren explains that she applied to his company under different names, but was always rejected. However, when she used his mother's name, V instantly hired her, which means that he still misses her. Hearing this, Narampan becomes happy and asks her to take many pictures of her son. But seconds later, she suddenly forgets what they were talking about. She begins to freak out, but Mirren hugs her and assures her that everything is okay. The following day, a meeting is held at the company and they discuss what happened to Mithawi. Soifet blames Mirren for everything, but V stands up for her. His grandfather then orders him to find a new investor soon. However, Soifet claims that her son is capable of doing a better job than V. Eventually, Grandpa suggests that they both look for an investor, and whoever gets the best contract will be in control of the company's upcoming projects. After the meeting, a determined V informs Mirren that he will look for a person named Big Noi, who is renowned as the Dragon of Investors due to his influence. Following a series of tips, they arrive at a nursing home where they see a group of old folks playing chess. One of them has a dragon tattoo on his arm, and they assume he's Big Noi. V tries to talk to him about investments, but the man refuses to listen and walks away. Meanwhile, Shannon approaches Tanya and asks her to become their investor. She says she has enough money for a lifetime and isn't interested in making more. However, when he suggests that being the investor could bring her closer to V, she agrees. Back at the nursing home, V and Mirren finally manage to convince the old man to accept the deal. But the problem is, he thinks they're insurance agents. V then asks if he's the famous investor Big Noi, but it turns out he isn't. Frustrated, he goes to his car and remembers that 14 years ago, his grandpa showed him a picture of Big Noi, but because of his face blindness, he couldn't recognize the face. Meanwhile, Soifet hires a private investigator to gather all the information about Mirren, especially why she has the same name as her sister-in-law. The following day, Mirren delivers 30 servings of brownies to her neighbor and loyal customer, whom she calls Aunt Noi. As she's about to leave, Mirren overhears a conversation and realizes that she's the famous Big Noi that they've been searching for. She quickly runs after the car, and catching up with her, she asks her to invest in a new project, which is an application for disabled people. In response, Aunt Noi tells her to have her boss visit her in two days, saying she will only give him 15 minutes of her time. Later, Mirren excitedly informs V about finding Big Noi, who has agreed to meet in two days. Thrilled by the news, he suggests she stay at his house to work on the plan for the meeting. She agrees and goes to prepare hot chocolate, while congratulating herself for finding Big Noi. At that moment, Shannon overhears her and is a little upset. Afterward, V and Mirren begin working on their business plan, and she notices that he's quite attractive. This makes it a little difficult for her to pay attention to work. Our hero senses her uneasiness, so he gets closer to her to try to figure out her expression by touching her face. But this only makes her nervous, and her heart starts beating rapidly. Meanwhile, Channon meets with his mother and tells her that Lee has discovered Big Noi. However, she simply laughs and insists it's impossible, since there is no one by that name. Later that night, the duo works diligently until an exhausted Mirren falls asleep on the desk. V then touches her face and wishes he could see her smile. As he leaves, she wakes up and gets confused by his words, as she's still unaware of his condition. Two days later on the day of their meeting with Aunt Noi, Mirren arrives at the office early. While waiting for V, Channon comes over and tries to get information from her. During their conversation, she accidentally reveals about their meeting with Aunt Noi. Just then, V arrives and becomes upset to see them together. He tells Channon not to mess with Mirren, since he shouldn't be approaching his secretary for information. Later in the car, V is still upset and tells Mirren she can talk with Channon all she wants, but warns her not to share work details. A little while later, they reach the park to meet with Aunt Noi. During their conversation, V mentions that they're working on a health app for disabled and elderly people. However, the shrewd investor says that he'll never grasp the needs of the disabled or elderly people. As she proceeds to leave, V finally opens up and tells her that he's disabled and can't see people's faces. He claims that this has prevented him from living a regular life because he has no idea about other people's emotions, whether they're happy, sad, or angry. He states that it all began when his mother abandoned him as a child, and this is the first time that he shared this with someone outside his family. Hearing this, Mirren begins to cry as she finally understands why he always needed her to recognize people. He then touches her face and says that he doesn't like her cheeks being wet from her tears. Aunt Noi, who is also deeply moved, agrees to consider his proposal. She takes the file and says she will contact them if she wants to invest. 
Once they're alone, V asks what Aunt Noi's expression on her face was. Mirren answers that she sympathized with him, which he doesn't like. He then tells her not to cry for him anymore. She admits that she doesn't pity him, but feels sad realizing how isolated he must feel due to this condition. She then promises to help him understand other people's feelings towards him. From that moment on, the two get closer and they even flirt with each other without realizing it. Later at home, Mirren's mother notices some changes in her and asks if she likes her boss. Our girl denies it, but her mother states that what she's doing is wrong. She warns her that if he finds out about her connection with his mother, he will be hurt. The next morning, Mirren shows V a small dog training tool that produces a click sound whenever she pushes the button. This will inform him of the expressions on other people's faces. For instance, if the person he's talking to is happy, a click will sound. If the person is angry, two clicks will sound. Mirren asserts that when she leaves, she will teach another employee this method, as well as the hot chocolate recipe. However, he claims there won't be a need for that, since she won't be going anywhere. Later that afternoon, they put the device to the test and practice at the company, and it works wonderfully. V steps out of his office and communicates effectively with his employees for the first time, shocking everyone. At that moment, Chan and Tanya also arrive and are taken aback by the change in him. Mirren informs him that Tanya is coming and suggests he smile, but he acts annoyed because he doesn't like her. This angers Tanya a lot, so she vows to invest a large amount of money to become a shareholder and then fire Mirren. In the next scene, the day has arrived when the cousins are supposed to present their investors. However, the only problem is, is that V hasn't heard anything from Aunt Noi, which worries him. Later, they arrive at the meeting and Chanon has brought Tanya, while V doesn't have anyone. Seeing this, Soifit mocks him and claims he can't do anything without the help of his cousin. But just then, Big Noi enters the room, leaving everyone in shock. Others are curious about her identity, but Grandpa quickly recognizes her. She apologizes for being late, explaining that she was at a doctor's appointment. She then asks to speak with the chairman alone, so everyone ends up leaving the room. Outside, Tanya vents her frustration for being kicked out and claims that she's also an investor and she should be respected. She then begins to insult Mirren, making harsh comments towards her, but this angers both the cousins and they immediately stop her. Moments later, Grandpa hears the commotion and comes outside to invite Channon and V into his office. When they're alone, Tanya again begins abusing Mirren, claiming she will force her to resign when she takes over the company. But our heroine isn't going to be intimidated by her anymore. She says she doesn't care how rich Tanya is, she will never follow her orders. Meanwhile, during the meeting, Grandpa announces that he's decided to accept Big Noise investment offer and they will involve Tanya in future projects. Hearing this, Channon gets upset and feels inferior compared to his cousin. He then goes to the rooftop to unwind, where he meets Mirren. She wonders what he's doing there, and he explains that he comes here when he feels sad. Sensing her distress, he advises her not to take Tanya's words to heart, claiming she doesn't know what she's talking about. Channon then tries to confess his feelings for her, but in his haste, he accidentally closes the door. This worries the duo, and he anxiously tries to call his secretary, but his phone battery has died. Mirren can't do anything either because she left her phone downstairs. During this brief confinement, she learns that he isn't sleeping well, which makes her worried. He also tells her that he wishes to have someone like her in his life, because since she entered V's life, he seems happier. Downstairs, V is furious that he can't find Mirren anywhere and begins looking for her. Soon, he discovers Channon is also missing, so he approaches his secretary and asks about him. She says that he must be relaxing on the rooftop, so V rushes there, and upon seeing the two of them together, he gets jealous. The tension between the cousins rises, and as they head downstairs, V asks him why he's behaving so angrily towards him. Channon responds that he's just frustrated with him, and leaves. Afterward at home, Mirren's mother advises her that she's already helped her boss too much, and suggests she resign. She also tells her about the potential consequences of her actions. Mirren understands this and promises her mother that she will resign soon. In the next scene, she goes to see Narampan and explains that she won't be able to update her anymore about V because she plans to resign. Hearing this, Narampan panics and pleads with her not to do so, stating that if Mirren also abandons him, there will be no one to take care of him. In the distance, a private investigator watches them and takes their picture. Later, he shows the picture to Soifet, who is shocked to discover that her sister-in-law is still alive. Seeing Mirren with her, she becomes even more confused and wonders about their relationship. She then asks the informant to keep this information a secret, stating that when the right time comes, she will use it to destroy V. In a flashback, we see Narampin's wedding day, where she is beautifully dressed and filled with excitement. Moments later, Soifet enters the room and says she looks like a cheap sandwich served on an expensive plate. She declares that she will never accept Narampin into her family. Hearing this, the poor woman is hurt, and she asks that she stop. However, Soifet continues to insult her before finally leaving. 
The next day, the team is working on developing an app to find missing people. One of the employees says that it invades privacy because some people don't want to be found. V argues that it's irresponsible to suddenly go missing without informing their family. However, Channon suggests that perhaps some people leave voluntarily to get away from their families. Hearing this, V gets upset and asks him if he's responsible for the disappearance of his mother. Channon responds rudely, saying that he should stop looking for his mother because she doesn't want to be found. The two men then get into a heated argument, and Channon eventually storms out of the office. Mirren tries to calm her boss down, but he lashes out at her, claiming she will never understand his situation because she still has a mother. Hearing this, she feels hurt and leaves the office in tears. She feels guilty, realizing that despite knowing everything about his mother, she is still unable to help him. Moments later, V approaches her, and upon touching her face, he realizes that she's crying. He apologizes for yelling at her and manages to cheer her up. The two then decide to take the day off and head to the amusement park. They spend a fun day together, and in the evening, they ride the carousel. After getting off the ride, V tells her that he believes she's the best person to have ever entered his life. Even though it may sound cliche, he is like those people who were horrible until someone came into their lives and changed them with love. He then confesses that he likes her and suggests they be a couple. However, as he turns back, he realizes that Mirren is no longer there. He begins to panic until he eventually finds her. V runs into her arms and asks her not to leave him alone. It turns out that while she was taking pictures, she stumbled and fell on the road. V jokingly tells her that she didn't listen to what he said, otherwise she would have earned a promotion. Later as they reach her home, he asks her why she seems so sad. Mirren replies that everything is fine and that she's just a little tired. She says goodbye, but not before thanking him for the days they've spent together. Meanwhile, he leaves with a big smile on his face, unaware of the meaning behind those words. The next morning when V arrives at the office, he realizes that Mirren hasn't shown up. He also discovers the recipe for hot chocolate in the kitchen, which surprises him. He immediately approaches Channon and asks if he knows where she is, but the latter has no idea. The two cousins start to panic, and when they inquire at the reception, they're horrified to learn that she's resigned. They then call her home to find out that she left early in the morning, claiming to be heading for work. Following this, V searches for her all over the city while Channon goes to her house and meets her family. He speaks with her mother and expresses confusion about her sudden resignation. However, Mom claims that she's also unaware of her whereabouts. On the other hand, V visits Aunt Noi, looking for Mirren. The investor has no clue, but she suggests he calm down and think hard about where she would go. Suddenly, he recalls a place and decides to drive there. Meanwhile, Channon remembers that Mirren had mentioned a rooftop as her special place. He immediately rushes there, but doesn't find her. Sometime later, V arrives at a bus stop where he eventually finds Mirren. He immediately hugs her and scolds her for resigning. She asks how he found her, and he recalls that she had once mentioned that she feels calm and relaxed at this place. Overwhelmed with emotion, she hugs him tightly and apologizes for leaving. Afterward, Channon receives a call from Tanya, who insists on a meeting. He tries to refuse, claiming he's busy, but she doesn't accept this and claims that she's at his house. When he arrives home, he finds his mother and Tanya waiting for him. The woman shows him the pictures of Mirren and Arumpin from the church. This shocks him, and he doesn't understand why Mirren would hide this from him. The woman claims that she deliberately joined this company with a hidden agenda and must be planning something sinister. Channon refuses to believe this, but they insist on using this information to destroy V and take over the company. Elsewhere, Mirren is about to confess, but V claims that he already knows everything and kisses her. She's confused until he explains that he knows she's in love with him, which is why she left the company. He reassures her not to worry, since he also likes her. Our heroine tries to explain, but he asks her not to leave again because he can't bear another loss. He tells her that he loves her and believes they can solve any problem together. Mirren is speechless, and she promises to tell him everything on Sunday, which he accepts. When she returns home, her mother asks her where she was. She says that she was with V and tried to tell him the truth, but he ended up confessing his love for her. Mirren then cries in her mother's arms, since she loves V with all her heart. However, she also knows that she has to tell him the truth and face the consequences sooner or later. The next morning, V arrives at Mirren's house to pick her up, and she's surprised by this gesture. Later at the office, he romantically asks her to be his girlfriend. She doesn't answer immediately, so he assumes it's a yes and hugs her tightly. At that moment, Channon witnesses their intimate moment and becomes angry. He later calls Tanya and declares that he's now prepared to use those photos to destroy his cousin. One day during a meeting, Grandpa announces that there will be a party this weekend and many foreign investors will attend. Excited by this news, V declares that he will present his new app idea at the event. 
After the meeting, Soifa tries to intimidate Mirren and makes fun of her. However, V defends her and even insinuates that she's his girlfriend. He then takes her by the hand and leads her away, shocking everyone. Seeing this, Soifa begins laughing and insulting Mirren, but Shannon says that he's been doing much better ever since she entered V's life. Later, when Tanya learns of the new relationship, she gets very jealous. She immediately goes up to Mirren and accuses her of stealing her man. She claims that his new secretary is seducing her boss at home. At that moment, V overhears their conversation and becomes very angry. He scolds Tanya and tells her to leave his girlfriend alone. He then says that he was never attracted to her because of her rude attitude and horrible personality. After Tanya leaves, V comforts Mirren and assures her that he won't allow anyone to bully her. He mentions that she reminds him of his mother, who used to be bullied by other family members. But his father never stood up for her to avoid conflict within the family. V says that he's not like his father and promises to protect Mirren from everyone. Hearing this, she reminds him that she has something important to tell him on Sunday. She hopes that he will continue to love her even after learning the truth, and he swears he will. Elsewhere, Tanya meets with Shannon and scolds him for not informing her about V's new relationship. She asks how he could allow this to happen, but he tells her not to worry and assures her that their relationship won't last much longer. The next few days, the cousins get busy preparing for the party, where each of them must present their app idea. However, on the day of the event, V is nowhere to be seen, which shocks everyone. Shannon goes to the stage and claims that his cousin won't be arriving today because he's busy. He then begins pitching his new app idea to the potential investors. Sometime later, Mirren arrives at the office where she eventually finds V. To her shock, he's looking at pictures of her with his mother. Although he can't see their faces, he recognizes the two women perfectly. He angrily asks Mirren if this is his actual mother. Our heroine has no words to explain, and she begins to cry. This devastates V, and he realizes that the only person he trusted in his life has lied to him. He accuses her of using his mother's name and making him look like a fool. She tries to explain herself, but he isn't ready to listen and kicks her out of the office. Meanwhile, at the event, Channon gives a wonderful presentation and captures the attention of many investors. Later, Tanya approaches V and tries to seduce him in his vulnerable moment. However, he knows her motives and he flatly rejects her, insists that he will never love her, no matter what. He then throws her out of the event, breaking her heart. Elsewhere, Grandpa goes to see Channon and compliments him on his earlier presentation. He thanks his grandson for taking care of the company and working hard. However, he's also upset that he didn't try looking for his missing cousin. Hearing this, Channon gets angry and claims that V has always been the favorite grandson, and that's why he's a spoiled brat. He states that he will no longer take care of V and instead focus on his own life from now on. In the next scene, Mirren returns home distraught, unable to stop crying. Her family asks her what happened, but she can't bring herself to tell them anything. With this, her mother quickly puts two and two together and assumes that V must have found out the truth. That night, Tanya and Shannon meet at a bar and they're both very mad at V and want to destroy him. He's worried that his grandpa might find out about his aunt's whereabouts, which could ruin their plans. Meanwhile, Mirren sends several messages to V asking for the opportunity to explain everything. In response, he simply asks for his mother's address and she sends him the location. The following morning, Soifet is worried that Grandpa will find out about Nirompin and bring her back. So, she sends a private investigator to go to the church and kidnap her. The man complies and heads to the church. However, upon reaching there, he learns from the priest that she no longer resides there and left a couple of days ago. Next, V arrives at a hospital where he finally sees his mother after many years. Turns out, Mirren had already taken her out of the church to protect her. Although V doesn't see her face, he becomes emotional and introduces himself as her son. Unfortunately, she claims that it's impossible because her son is just 10 years old. This confuses our hero, so the nun takes him aside and informs him that his mother has dementia and it has worsened over the years. She explains that Mirren and her mom have been taking care of her all these years. Shocked by this, V declares that he will now take care of his mother and cover all her expenses. He then asks how he can help her, and the nun suggests that they should go through her old experiences as it might trigger her memories. That afternoon, Mirren goes to deliver some brownies to Aunt Noy's house. During their conversation, the investor reveals that V had disappeared and that his project was not chosen. Since she doesn't want to invest in Channon's project, she asks Mirren to fix the situation. Although she's resigned, Mirren goes to the company and finds out that Channon has already moved into V's office. At first, he's very happy to see her, but when she asks about V, he gets mad and claims that he won't be returning. She asks if he sent the photos, and he admits that he did. Mirren says that what he did was very low, and he shouldn't have done that to V on such an important day. However, Channon says that he will take over the company soon. He then asks her if she wants to be his secretary, but she bluntly refuses his offer and leaves. 
Later that night, she's walking back home upset when she suddenly notices V in front of her. He talks to her as if nothing happened between them and then asks her if she will teach him how to make hot chocolate. Mirren agrees and takes him home, where they do just that. Afterward, as they break, Mirren tries to explain what happened, but he stops her and claims that he doesn't want to talk about it right now. At this moment, he only wants to focus on helping his mother. Later, as he falls asleep on the couch, Mirren finds his notebook, in which he has written down the recipe for the hot chocolate. As she turns the pages, she discovers that he has written down each of the important moments they spent together. Deeply moved, she decides to leave him a note, expressing her feelings and hoping that he will read it soon. The following morning, V is on his way out, but Mirren's mother stops him and asks him to stay for breakfast. They talk about his mother, and he can't understand why she abandoned him because it left a very big wound that he still hasn't healed from. During breakfast, Aunt Noi also arrives and wants to talk to V in private. Once they're alone, she scolds him for being irresponsible and disappearing from the company suddenly. She also advises him to forgive Mirren, since she knows how much the girl regrets having lied to him. She then states that Shannon has turned against him and urges him to take action soon if he doesn't want to lose his position. Afterward, Mirren tells V that she will accept if he no longer wants her to be by his side. However, he replies that she's the only person who loves him for who he is and knows everything that's going on in his life. Despite everything that's happened between them, he still wants her by his side. On the way to the hospital, she asks him what he's going to do about the company's situation. Although Channon is against him, V claims that he doesn't want to fight him because he considers him a brother and is willing to give him everything. Mirren then explains that Channon is not actually competing for the company, but for their grandpa's acceptance. This revelation makes V feel sad because the only reason his grandfather pays more attention to him is due to his mother abandoning him and his face blindness. Meanwhile, Channon meets Tanya to discuss investing in their company. Since their grandfather has also disappeared, he suggests that she buy the majority of the shares, making her the owner. She can then appoint him as CEO, effectively overthrowing V. Later in the hospital, V gives the hot chocolate to his mother in hopes that she will remember him. However, this doesn't happen, leaving our boy heartbroken. Mirren tries to console him, but he believes that his mother will never recover and begins to cry. She tells him not to despair because things always take time, and besides, he will never be alone since she will always be by his side. She then climbs onto a bench, and the two warmly hug. That same afternoon, Narampin suddenly disappears from her room, so V looks for her everywhere until he finds her talking to a child. She tells the kid that her son used to be like him, but is now grown up. Moments later, she notices a crying V in front of her and finally recognizes him as her son. As the two hug, V suddenly manages to see his mother's face, causing him to cry even more. He also approaches Mirren and sees her face for the first time. He compliments her and tells her that she is much more beautiful than he had imagined. After this, V takes his mother to his new house so they can live together as a family. He also takes pictures with her to show her in case she forgets him again. During this time, he asks Mirren if she wants to officially be his girlfriend. Although she's overjoyed, she pretends not to listen and playfully asks him to ask again. However, he doesn't say anything and simply gives her a sweet kiss. In the next scene, we see Soyfet trying to bribe the female shareholders with designer bags so they'll vote for her son in the CEO election. She threatens that if anyone doesn't comply, she might kick them out of the company. On the other hand, V claims that it's time to return to the company, which is under the control of Channon and his mother. He then begins preparing for the comeback with the help of Mirren. However, he tells her that he doesn't want to destroy his cousin, but he wants to teach him that what he's doing is wrong. The following day, as Mirren is leaving her house, Soyfet's private investigator follows her, wanting to find out Narampin's location. But she soon notices him and enlists the help of two passers-by to confront the stalker. She records a video of him and asks who sent him, but the man becomes paranoid and immediately flees the scene. Days later, a meeting is held for the new appointment of the CEO, and Channon is very confident that he will win. Tanya has also become the biggest shareholder and is on his side. Before the meeting proceeds, the grandpa unexpectedly shows up. Seeing him, Channon becomes upset and he begins talking about how he should be the upcoming CEO. Most of the shareholders support him, but suddenly, V shows up and interrupts the moment. The shareholders claim that he's very rude and arrogant, and they don't want V as their new CEO. In response, our hero admits that he has lots of flaws, but expresses his commitment to change and work diligently for the company. His grandpa also supports him and claims that the company has achieved success on many projects under V's leadership. Channon argues that he did all the work and was behind all those projects. However, due to Grandpa's influence, the shareholders eventually agree to give V a second chance. Soyfet and Tanya try to object to this, but Channon stops them and claims he agrees with the decision. 
Later, Grandpa talks with V alone and claims that this is his last chance to prove himself. He asks if he found his mother, and V is shocked that he knows this information. Grandpa then clarifies that it's not that he loves V more than his cousin, but Shannon always had his mother, where V had to stay under his care. The old man realizes his grandson can now see faces, making him very happy. He tells V that he's now going to leave him alone, since he no longer needs him. V thanks him for everything he's done, because without his help, he would never have come this far. Meanwhile, Tanya encounters Marin in the bathroom and once again begins tormenting her. But our girl no longer allows herself to be bullied, and instead makes mean remarks towards her. Enraged, Tanya goes to see Channon and asks him to arrange a meeting with the head programmer, since she has a plan to remove V from the company once and for all. Channon isn't too convinced, but after some persuasion from his mother, he agrees. Soifet claims that she will destroy V and his supporters. However, Channon asks her not to mess with Mirren, as she has nothing to do with the situation. Tanya meets with the head programmer and asks him to leak the data of all the users who use the applications developed by V. He's a bit hesitant, but she promises to protect him and offers him a huge sum of money. In the next scene, the cousins meet in the elevator and engage in a heated argument. V accuses him of using his mother to hurt him, while Channon claims that Grandpa prefers him just because of his face blindness. He then starts blaming V for the disappearance of his mother, which deeply hurts him. Due to this, their argument escalates into a physical altercation, and both end up getting injured. That evening under the orders of Tanya, two programmers leak user information from several applications managed by V. The next day, the news of this data leak affecting over 20,000 users goes viral across all media. This prompts several shareholders to sell their shares, inevitably costing the company millions. V is shocked by the unexpected development, but he stands up and apologizes for the damages caused by his application. Meanwhile, Channon goes in search of Tanya and his mother, as he's aware that they are responsible for everything. He tells Tanya that her actions amount to a crime, but she explains that the police can't take any action against them. She offers him a huge amount of money she received from her father, and asserts that they won't need Big Noy anymore. However, he requests that the woman not be involved in the company's affairs any longer, as he intends to handle everything. Afterward, Grandpa calls both the cousins and asks Channon if he's responsible for the data leak. Channon responds angrily, saying it's V's fault for not tightening up the data security. Grandpa then urges the two to stop fighting, as it's not good for their reputation. In response, V announces his decision to resign from the company, as he's fed up with the drama. He asks that Channon open an investigation to determine who is behind the attack. That same afternoon, V holds a press conference and Mirren also arrives to support him. During the conference, he apologizes for what happened and assumes all the responsibility. He declares that he's resigning from his position and his cousin will take over the company. He then invites Channon to the stage, but before him, Tanya takes over and begins praising herself. She claims that she will take care of the company from now on, angering Channon. At home, Grandpa is also watching the live stream and he becomes so upset that he almost has a heart attack. However, he quickly takes some medication and calms himself down. A little while later, the couple vacates their office and prepares to go home. Channon takes advantage of the moment and asks Mirren if she no longer thinks he's good. She responds that the person she once knew no longer exists, as it seems he has betrayed his principles and hurt people who love him just to gain power. At that moment, V appears and asks his girlfriend to get in the car. She wishes his cousin good luck as the new CEO, and Shannon is shocked that even after such setbacks, the couple is still not discouraged. The next day, Marin goes to Aunt Noy's house to deliver some brownies. During their talk, Aunt Noy tells her that she's going to the company to meet Shannon and asks her to come along. So, the next day, they both go to the office, where Aunt Noy asks him to cancel their contract since she only wants to work with V. He agrees without hesitation and promises to return her investment money. Meanwhile, V goes to see his mother but realizes she's having a bad day. She takes Soifet's number and begins to cry uncontrollably. Our hero comforts her and asks her why she's crying, but she doesn't say anything. In a flashback, we see Narampan devastated by the death of her husband. Moments later, Soifet approaches her and begins calling her a gold digger. Now that her husband is dead, she demands that Narampan leave the house immediately. She then threatens to kill her and her son if she doesn't comply. The next morning, Narampan has a good day, bringing happiness to her son. He then asks her about his aunt's actions, and she finally reveals that Soifat had always hated her brother for inheriting the company. She's now worried that V will take over the company because he is the descendant of the only male child. This is why she's been trying to sabotage V, so that her son can be the new CEO. Meanwhile, Channon meets with the programmers who leaked the information and confronts them. However, they give him attitude, claiming that it was Tanya's orders. They say that if Channon wants them on his side, then he will have to pay more than she did. 
Later, these programmers meet with Tanya to warn her that Shannon is upset about what she did and will probably take action to remove her. This worries her, so she starts devising a plan to throw him out and become the sole boss of the company. The next morning, Grandpa summons all the executives and shareholders for an emergency meeting. He then claims that he's opened an investigation to find out who is behind the data leak. This worries Tanya and she begins insulting and arguing with Grandpa. Both Shannon and his mother are shocked at how she could disrespect the chairman. Tanya claims that the old man has done nothing except founding this company, and the others do all the work. Since she is the biggest shareholder, she threatens him, saying she can fire him if she wants. Hearing this, Grandpa is so shocked that he suffers a heart attack. When they learn of the situation, V and Mirren arrive at the hospital. Channon gets very emotional upon seeing his cousin and explains everything that happened in the meeting. He apologizes for everything and hopes that V will forgive him. Our hero promptly forgives him and admits that he didn't want Grandpa to give him more attention. He also apologizes to Channon for the hurt he has caused. The two cousins then reconcile and decide to join forces against Tanya to remove her from the company. On the other hand, Soifa talks with Marin and tearfully admits her mistake. She blames herself for her father's situation and claims that she was so power hungry that she gave control of their company to a stranger. She also apologizes to Marin for the way she has treated her and vows to be respectful from now on. Later, they all go to see Grandpa, who is happy that his family has finally reunited. He apologizes to Channon for not paying him as much attention as his cousin, which led to their fight. In the following days, the cousins team up with their secretaries and begin to plan on how to oust Tanya. Days later, a group of angry protesters goes on strike outside the company due to the data leak, making the situation tense. Tanya organizes a shareholder meeting and asserts that she can resolve the situation. She asks them to vote for her for new CEO, and they reluctantly agree. But at that moment, they see on TV that the cousins have organized a press conference where they reveal that Tanya was the cause of the data leak. They have managed to find evidence against her, and even the programmers have given their testimony. Hearing this, Tanya screams nonstop and claims she doesn't know anything about it. However, the shareholders refuse to listen to her, and she is eventually kicked out of the company. Elsewhere, Soifet apologizes to her father for the mess she's caused. The old man sees her sincerity and apologizes for not having valued her enough. He then informs her that they found Narampin and suggests bringing her home, to which she agrees. Later, Soifet apologizes to V for everything she has done to him and asks to meet with his mother. He agrees and forgives her. After all, they are family. The next day, he takes his mother to Grandpa's house, but unfortunately, she's having another bad day. Later, Narampin sits alone with Soifet, who cries and apologizes for all the damage she's done. Narampin doesn't understand what's going on, but she accepts her apology, claiming that Soifet seems to be a good person. After a month, things have improved enormously since all the family members have reconciled with each other, and Aunt Noi has decided to invest in the company again. One day, there's an important meeting where Grandpa is going to announce the new CEO. During the meeting, both cousins point toward each other and claim that they deserve the position. But Grandpa shocks everyone by announcing that Soifet is the new CEO. The cousins are very happy with this decision and congratulate her on the position. In the following days, the relationship between Mirren and V grows stronger, and they are always by each other's side. One morning during breakfast, Aunt Noi suddenly asks them about getting married, which catches them off guard. This sparks an idea in V's mind, and he begins planning the proposal. In the next scene, he takes Mirren to the amusement park where they have a great time. While on the carousel, he begins to share that initially, this place was torture for him and it reminded him of his mother's abandonment. However, when Mirren arrived in his life, this place took on a completely different meaning. Since then, he could trust that things would improve for the better, and that's exactly what happened. Even though their relationship began with a lie, he knows that it will never happen again because she loves him sincerely. Following this, he gets down on one knee and proposes marriage. When he asks for the answer, Mirren tells him to look at his notebook where she had written something down a long time ago. When he opens it, he finds that she has written that even though she's a poor woman and he's a rich man, nothing can come between them and she is ready to marry him when the time comes. V is deeply moved by this and they seal their engagement with a kiss.